Hello, Matthew Mujinski here from Lobsters Are Weird, uh, and today we're going to have a tutorial for you for the Foundry Mari. Uh, going to be sort of a quick start tutorial, things that I wish I had known my first day using the program. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Mari is a 3D texturing program. You can bring in your objects and texture them in 3D uh, using projection mapping. And uh, let's jump right in. So the first thing you're going to need to do is set up your project. Um, this is the screen that you're going to see when you start up Mari. You're going to want to create a new one. Give it a name. And find the path to your object. Uh, here I just have everything in one folder on uh, Digimshare. And you really don't need to uh, do anything with these. Uh, this says um, you'll use your UVs if they have them. If not, if you don't have any UVs at all, it will use p-text, which is basically each face becomes a little image with its own texture. Um, probably not the best way to do it because then you can't work with the exported textures in Photoshop or anything like that if you want to make changes later. Um, selection sets, don't really need to worry about that too much, but if you want to, you can create selection sets um, in Maya and then export them into Mari in order to like quickly se select like say I want to select all my windows at once you know like um, you know it'll just like just that part of geometry or like I want to select like all the faces on this uh, UV island you know you'd be able to set it as a text uh, selection set and um, this doesn't matter too much either I've never had to use it and for the texture root path you're going to want to make sure that it's going to the correct folder. Right there, it's just work folder. Don't need to make any of these because um, you're probably going to want to make your own channels. And hit OK. Now, Mari is a big program, and one of the immediate things you notice is that. Uh, it takes a second for it to carry out most of the actions you're going to ask from it. So here's just a simple object I made just for the tutorial. Um, so first thing we're going to want to do is get your shader set up. So here on the right side of the screen you're going to want to click the shaders tab and then here if you click this drop down it lets you select which shader you want to use. We're going to use BRDF. It's uh, compatible with like uh, um, a Disney Pixar shader for RenderMan. And it says it's going to be using current channel. Uh, for me, it already created a diffuse channel over here. So we're going to make sure that it's using that for the input for the diffuse. Um, now, as we go along, we're going to be creating more channels. Like here, if we create a specular channel. Uh, it's not a complicated object so we only need it to be like a 1k texture map. Create the specular channel and we can go and plug that into the specular color. And you can do this for every uh, channel of the shader. Now right now it's set to only be in orthographic uh, viewport but you can switch it to have a split orthographic and UV viewport. So right now it says that I have a single UDIM of 1001. If you had uh, a more complicated object and you wanted to spread stuff across multiple UV spaces, you could have multiple UDIMs up to, I believe, a thousand of them. Um, not that you'd ever really want that. And right now it's set, it's, uh, set to be a 1024 by 1024 uh, map. If I wanted to, you could resize it to uh, change the size if you need to bump it up or down. Um, note that that is, uh, it will bake that, so it will, uh, you know, compress or, you know, if you size it down or blur it if you size it up. But uh, we'll, we'll keep it, oh, uh, we'll keep it 2K. Uh, if you hit I, it lets you select. Uh, which, uh, what you want the viewer to be connected to. If, uh, for anyone that uses Nuke, 
Mari actually uses a node graph in a viewer system on the back end that I'll show you later. Um, but if you hold down I, it lets you select what you want to be looking at right now. We're just going to look at the full shader. So we're going to come over here, make sure we have the layers palette open. And here's where you can make a new layer. You can make a new groups of layers. It's a lot like Photoshop. You can create layers. You can add uh, adjustment layers, mask layers. You can add stacks of adjustment layers and mask layers. You can add procedural layers, such as uh, a noise layer. See, as I bring the size down, you start to be able to see it. You can select which uh, blending mode you want to use. And you can uh, change how transparent you want it to be. So let's uh, paint something onto this object. So if you hit P, that brings up your paintbrush. Um, and e every single key bind in Mari can be changed based on your preferences. If that doesn't work for you, if that's confusing, you can go ahead and change that. And uh, so here, see we've drawn, and you can watch on the UV map as it uh, adds to the UV map. And then if you mouse over to it, you can see that it, it changes from being projected onto here to onto here. And you'll notice if we turn the camera, it's not staying on the object. That's because we're painting in screen space right now. So, you know, it's a 2D on your screen being projected down. Now, if we want to bake it down onto the object, you'd hit B. And uh, accidentally added a little bit more. Now, if you hit uh, Control Shift B, that bakes and then makes sure that it's clear. So you see that it's also painting through, and it's also um, projecting on the entire object. If I only wanted to say paint onto these faces over here in the projection tab, I would set it to uh, selected only. And if I didn't want it to project all the way through, I would select just front. So say you decided after you baked down that you had made a mistake, uh, you'll notice if you select the eraser tool, it doesn't do anything because the eraser tool only works for screen space. If you wanted to actually get rid of stuff that you've baked, you'd have to come up to the painting mode and select clear and that means that you're going to be painting in a way that removes what's been baked down onto the object and then control shift B bake it you can see got rid of all the stuff on the side that was facing us because I had it set to front projection So painting is all well and good, but Mari gets a lot better once you start using images uh, and project projecting them down on. If you want to do that, come over here to the image manager. You can create new shelves to keep yourself organized. And if you click this, it lets you bring it in. If you bring in a PSD, it'll bring in the individual layers. If you bring in uh, like a PNG or something, it'll be one image. Now, also, um, control R lets you roll the camera to get that third axis of camera control, uh, which I needed just then. So if you click and drag it onto your screen, and you'll see that it's, uh, it's pretty big. You can see here with your tool help, it will uh, 
give you all the control so it's control shift to scale it shift to move it and if I come over here I can also project down onto there or I can just lose it entirely should just set my painting mode back to normal clear the stuff in the paint buffer and I'm going to paint this down on Now remember this is you know 2D this is in screen space so when I hit control shift B you can see that it projected down onto the object now this is really useful for uh, airbrushing in effects we're going to bring in a metal texture here say I want to get some going there so control to rotate it I'm gonna turn the opacity down of my uh, brush here and then I'm just gonna kind of start brushing it in there I can scale it up while I work I still haven't baked it down If we think that looks good, bake it down onto the object. So you can see uh, making sure that your angle that you're working at is important. Make, um, this is where the only paint on the selection here in your uh, project on option uh, comes in handy. But now we have a, a very, very basic object painted in Mari. Now, if I wanted to share, say, this noise layer from the diffuse channel to a specular channel, um, so that way it's going to stay updated as I change the noise layer in either the diffuse or specular, the changes will be passed on to the other one. And you can do this with any layer in uh, Mari. So you right click it, sharing, share layer, and then you click and drag it all the way up here, hover it over until it selects specular, and then drop it down on. If we go over to our shader, now let's also make a gloss channel. You can share that noise again. then if I go back here and change the size you can see that it affects all the channels at once now say uh, you had uh, an issue with your object, you want to make some changes to it, you want to update it or something, uh, which is something that I had to do my first day. Uh, you can actually version your objects as long as the UV maps don't change uh, too much. Well, at all, but you know, a little, t a little tweak here and there might be acceptable. Um, so you go into View, Palettes. Uh, Mari is uh, one of those programs where everything is very adjustable all these tabs they can be apparently not drug out yeah there you go and uh... moved around expanded uh... closed so we're gonna open up the objects palette and here's our object you can bring in multiple objects move them around in the scene and stuff but um... remember mari is mostly just for texturing individual objects so we're going to right click this, add a version, 
and uh, here I have the old version of it from before I unwrapped it and had SUV layout. And then down here we can select which version of geometry we want to use. And you can see it goes from good UV mat to the not so good one. Alright, so once you're done uh, painting and creating your textures, you're going to want to export them uh, so that they can be used in something like Maya. Uh, so you're going to want to go up to your channel. So you can either export the channel, custom channel, all channels, everything. Uh, if you do just export, it'll keep every layer as its own image. And if you export flattened, it will be one image per ch uh, UDEM per channel. So we're just going to export this channel flattened. And you're going to want to find where you want to save it. In here, so it's going to be named after the channel, named after udim.tiff. And you can see here, it's exported to my diffuse channel for UDIM 1001. And there's my texture. And if you slap this on an object on the object in Maya, it will uh, map on there pretty nicely. All right, and that about does it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment on this video. Uh, and additionally, if you have more questions or perhaps a little bit harder, uh, sign up for the Mari users mailing list for uh, from the Foundry's uh, support people. Uh, you know, you can send an email asking a question. Someone will get back to you uh, pretty quickly. You know, if you have any specific question, you know, Mari isn't a very uh, popular program, it doesn't have a big user base, so the forums, you know, there isn't going to be 100 different threads of people asking the same questions as you most of the time. Um, but, you know, uh, the people that know the answers are out there, so uh, this is the best way to get a hold of them and ask them some questions. It helped me out a lot, uh, with f figuring out some of the stuff in this video. And, of course, um, check out all the documentation that's available. Uh, from the program. Right. Thank you. Uh, have fun.